Hi, my name is Steve. I go by Hall Staff on the forums and on YouTube. And uh, we run a haunt, uh, the SOS Haunt here in San Diego, Sanctuary of Spooks. It's a fully automated haunt. We had uh, oh, between 35 and 40 automated props uh, that we've built uh, on display last year. And uh, plan to have quite a few more this year, combination of motorized props, servo-driven props, pneumatic props. Uh, but uh, they're all self-contained. Uh, none of them are hooked up to computers. And uh, we get a lot of questions about how we uh, run, especially our three-axis skulls. Uh, that system, uh, there's several different ways to run it. Uh, the most popular and the one that's been used is uh, using a software program called VSA um, and a servo control board, and where you actually go in and, and hand set each and every movement your three-axis skull is going to do. Well, for most of us, we just need random movement in our skulls. And I've noticed uh, when I did that and seen other people do it, uh, usually what they were doing is just making their head on their three-axis skull rotate and tilt and nod uh, with no real reasoning behind it. They just wanted movement. So uh, we came up with a different method. Uh, I've got a board that uh, uses a random head code. And for most of my props, uh, that's what they're all running on for, for all my three-axis. Uh, it's quite a bit easier to set up. I can usually have one set up and running in about 30 minutes. Uh, a lot cheaper uh, instead of having to buy a couple programs, uh, well over $100 and a joystick and servo controller boards. Um, my setup is about 10 bucks, And uh, as long as you have a, a $20 cable to, to program it with or to adjust the programming. And, um, and again, it's just very fast, very quick. Uh, and very reliable. Uh, here's an example of one of our guys that uh, will be joining our cast this year. This is Pete, and uh, I'll put a link to the thread on Haunt Forum uh, that kind of chronicles the build of Pete. Uh, we're just uh, now completing that build and just about ready to showcase the final product, but you can see how that build uh, has progressed over the last few months. And uh, he's three axis skull. He's got three servos running the nod, the tilt, and the um, rotate of the skull, uh, a fourth servo to run the jaw, which uh, we use another uh, little board uh, that was put together, a Scary Terry board, uh, adapted by uh, T. Straub. And uh, I went through and adapted it again and made up some boards, and that's what we use to operate his jaw. And he also has light up eyes. So uh, the three axis uh, movements and the eye, uh, turning the eyes on and off, are all controlled by this little board that I'm going to show you and uh, the programming that goes along with it. So, this is what makes it all work. Uh, this little board, 15 or so components, and uh, some programming that, uh, for the random head code, which is already written, um, is what makes this whole thing work. Uh, the random head code uh, it does need a little bit of adjustment. You do need, like I, I said, a $20 uh, programming cable. You don't have to actually go in and do any of the programming. The program's written. You just have to adjust the servo limits. Uh, a couple different ways you can do it. If you don't want to do it programming at all, you can adjust the servo horns and, and kind of uh, make it work that way. Or you can use a uh, simple servo tester. Uh, this one uh, is another board that uh, T. Straub uh, came up with. And it's a little servo tester, and we set our servo limits here. Then all you do is go back into the program, and the only thing you're changing is the numbers on the servo limits. It takes 15 minutes to change all the numbers for the nod, tilt, and rotate, and you're ready to go. Here's a little bit uh, on how this board goes together. Uh, I'm not going to do a full soldering uh, tutorial here. I have a lot of good tutorials on the web. I've got... Uh, one that's a kind of an a intro to soldering. So don't want to really go through that. Just want to kind of show you how easy this board is to put together. And uh, if you're just getting started in electronics, uh, wanting to get into a build, they don't get much simpler than this. And we'll kind of go over some of the components here and what it takes to put this little board together. Um, as you can see, it doesn't have very many components. Uh, uh, seven resistors, an LED, little chip holder here for a little microprocessor. We've got a little cap up here, larger cap back here. We've got a little three millimeter red LED here. And uh, the pins here, this is uh, two pins for your five volt uh, power supply. 
We've got uh, four pins here. Uh, we use three of them for the servo. As you can see, I've got them labeled. This one's the nod, this is the rotate, and this is the tilt servo. Uh, usually use this fourth set of pins here to run the eyes. Uh, we have a download set of pins here where we plug our download cable in. And then we just have to, if we're going to use this fourth set of pins, have to change this little jumper. This uh, uh, pin configuration here is both for download and for using uh, this pin. So we just have to move that little jumper over um, when we move from the download portion and then we just move that little jumper down to here when we want to run that fourth pin and run our set of eyes. So uh, again, usually when I'm laying a board out like this to start soldering it, I'll put down all the, the resistors and then my favorite little trick is um, I use uh, blue painter's tape. It doesn't leave residue. I don't have to worry about my components separating for the board. I just kind of tape that down, flip the board over and solder those up. And that's usually my first set of components. Usually you want to build from the uh, bottom of the board up so the components closest to the board get soldered first. And as they get taller, you progressively um, go up into taller and taller uh, components until you get it done. Uh, this chip is actually not soldered to the board. It actually has uh, a little socket. And um, here you can see the socket. And uh, that gets inserted first. And then after we're all done soldering uh, the board up, we go ahead and, and put that chip in. Uh, that's to protect it from the heat. We don't want to be soldering and uh, adding all that heat to the, to the component there. Uh, one little thing on this, you'll notice that it's got a little notch here. And that notch corresponds to the notch on the board. So uh, we'll use that as an indicator of which way to install the chip. Uh, so add in the resistors. Usually then I'll add in the LED and the little cap up front here. Then, and I'll put in my 8-pin socket here for the chip. And then I'll go ahead and add in all of the pin headers. And then the last component I'll add is this big 330 uh, cap here at the very last. And uh, that concludes the build. Really, that's all there is to this build. You then install the chip to it. Um, and you can go ahead and start running your 3-axis right after once you add that program uh, that's already written. You'll just want to adjust those servo limits so that uh, it'll correspond to the way that you put your 3-axis skull together. Again, a very simple process, just requires a $20 cable and changing some numbers around. Um, you're not reprogramming or writing any new code. You're just substituting your numbers for the numbers that uh, are in there for my latest skull. So that really is all there is to the build. Uh, I do have these little boards available. Um, I've made these up. Uh, I don't really sell them commercially, but uh, if you're inter interested, please let me know. Um, shoot me an email um, because I, I do have some of these. Um, have no problem selling them if somebody wants one, five bucks. So um, again, here's the board. It's all laid out. It, it shows exactly um, you know, what components go into what spots. Uh, the component assembly, a couple bucks from Tata, um, which is uh, my preferred uh, place to pick up parts. The, the components there are the least expensive of any place I've found. Uh, you just need to get your, your uh, pickaxe chip that goes here in this little socket um, from another location. Several places uh, stock that and the little jumper um, that goes on there. Uh, Tata doesn't carry that. Uh, one word though on power supplies. When you're running this, this runs off of 5 volts, uh, which the pickaxe chip really likes and the servos are very happy with. But you are running three servos as well as the board. Make sure that you get a power supply that's up to the task. Um, the particular power supply I'm running is a, f a regulated 5 volt supply and, uh, and you do want regulated. If you don't know what that is, uh, shoot me a message. We'll be happy to, to talk about that. But uh, if you just look at the wall warts, and again these are just wall warts that you plug in, your computer's plugged into it, uh, your cell phone, whatever. You want a 5 volt uh, supply. 
but a lot of them aren't regulated. You may plug a 5 volt in and, and put your meter on it and find out that it's actually putting out 10 volts or 11 volts, uh, which will damage your chips and your servos. So you do want to check, make sure that you've got a regulated supply um, or that you're running the right voltage through. But you also want, when you're running this many servos, is to get one with enough amps. This particular one has two and a half amps, which does a great job of running the board and all three of the servos and the eyes. Uh, you try and put a 300 milliamp uh, power supply on here, it will not run everything. You're going to be very uh, disappointed when things don't work out when you go to plug it in. So make sure to get a power supply, again, correct voltage with enough amps uh, to run your prop. Well, uh, that's about it. Again, not many components, a fairly simple build. Goes together, uh, you know, in a few minutes. Uh, nothing too complicated to this. Um, and again, a $10 build or less, probably 30 minutes um, to get your three-axis skull up and running. So we'll give you a little preview of what it looks like with one of the props uh, that uh, is going to be joining our cast this year. Brand new prop, uh, first time being shown. Show you what the three-axis skull random head movement looks like. There, matey. Come on over here. Grab ye a glass and join an old pirate in the drink. Whilst I tell ye the gruesome details of me slight misfortune. Our gallant efforts could not save our fine ship, but as luck would have it, we found ourselves here and ship shaped this anchorage be for pleasure seeking robes. Drink up, me hearties. Yo ho!